I think a really important food plot concept is the power of green. The power of green is often overlooked. Um, putting a lot of beans, putting a lot of corn in, and you know, around these parts, we have corn and beans everywhere. And so imagine those deer, they're sitting up in the hills right here and they're bedded down, they're eating acorns, twigs, woody shrub tips, briars. And really what they have during the day and in their daytime hours is hardwood regeneration, woody regeneration, and a lot of hard mast. And it's all roughage, you know, it's hard to digest. So imagine them sitting up in those hills. First thing you wanna do when they come out of their bedding areas is to come down here and hit these greens that we're offering. And I think that's the same around the country where deer are bedded, they typically don't have a lot of soft mass back in there, um, back in their bedding areas. They have a lot of woody browse and hard to digest. And so when you offer green in your food plots on private land, then you're really setting the table for some diversity that not only do they need to help um, digest all that roughage that they've been eating all day, but then at the same time, they crave it. They love it. So to me, the, the power of green, the green is uh, really the foundation of all food plots. Um, when I look at properties and when I uh, design food plot programs, and I have I've done so for over 700 uh, clients around the country, I'm really looking at this green base first. If you look at a food plot pyramid and that triangle, that lower foundation of all food plots should be green. And then I look at corn, then I look at beans. So it's not that I don't recommend corn and beans, it depends on the size of the parcel and where it's located. And green, whatever you can get to grow in green and be appreciable throughout the entire hunting season and offer diversity, then is what you should plant. You now, when we go up to northern settings, up to the UP of Michigan, um, northern Minnesota, upstate New York, in those northern settings sometimes where you get into areas where there's no ag and it's almost wilderness type settings. Um, I, I lived up there and had food plots for 10 years and in that location it's really hard to even get brassicas to be appreciable and to, and to actually offer enough volume uh, going into October, November just because the deer craved them so much it was the only green available and brassicas can't take a lot of browsing pressure especially when they're young. Now when they get to 30 inches tall, 36 inches, and they have that, that pure volume, then they can take a little bit of pressure at that point. But once uh, that first frost hits in early September up in those northern areas, then there's no more green and every bite is not replaced. And so a deer can consume that uh, pretty quick. Beans, peas, I tried to plant those up in the UP. They wouldn't even make it to September, um, let alone the brass because making it into October. I really, over the years up there, migrated to planting just straight layering of winter rye, where I would layer that winter rye. Um, I'd plant middle of August, which up there is about four weeks before the first frost date. And then uh, I'd plant again about three weeks later, 100 pounds over the 100 pounds that I just put down. And then I'd plant another 100 pounds, a third planting. So those plantings overall were about nine weeks apart. And, um, but what it did is it helped to fill space. It fill space this way. I wasn't expecting a lot of growth and a lot of height, but what I wanted to do is offer as much green as I could to help build that foundation of that food plot program. And then ultimately, that was the best blend up there in that location for sandy soil, for poor soil. And uh, you know, around these parts, we can plant the super blends. You know, I have peas and beans on this side, a brassica blend on the other side, and then I'm gonna top dress this with uh, 300 pounds per acre of winter rye right around October 1st, which will be good timing right here. So, you know, we can offer a lot of diversity here in these types of areas. This is, you know, mixed ag, great soil. And, uh, and then when you get down into, let's say, Southern Indiana, Southern Illinois, um, over into Southern Ohio, Kentucky, um, you can get a lot, of, a lot of really good benefits by just pure clover, maybe some alfalfa where you're still, you can get that volume during the hunting season with clover or alfalfa because you can have that high, that high volume and you can carry that volume all the way in through the hunting season because it's still growing every single day. So you still get growth on it. You know, once that clover, when you get that first frost and that clover stops growing, um, when I had that up in the UP of Michigan, it was gone. It was gone by, oh boy, it would be down to the dirt by early October. So it didn't work really up there, but now I'd, I'd really like to offer a, more of a variety than just straight rye up north or even 
uh, clover down in Kentucky or some of those southern areas. And so some of those areas you might want to add um, some cereal grains. Um, you might want to add some oats, some winter rye. Um, you might want to add some beans or, or corn if you have the room to. But again, it goes back to the power of green is, is incredible. Uh, don't uh, miss out in your food plot programs. Um, whatever you can get to be appreciable and grow during the hunting season and offer something for the entire hunting season, then that's what you need to plant in your area. And there's a lot of different mixes that you could look forward to. You know, I, I talk about my favorite uh, food plot blends every single year, and that's looking at, you know, a general, general food plot planting in most areas. Um, but in your area, you know, you need to look at what's going to be there, what can be green, what you can offer, what can be green and be offered to the deer for the entire hunting season. And if you can find that green blend for your area, maybe uh, look at some of the tips that we have on this channel and on the website uh, for what might be a fit for your, for your land specifically. But if you can look at that and address those needs and address the needs of the deer for that green blend, then uh, you'll be on track for a great food plot program on your land this season.